Okay, Shalom, Yashallah. All praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Uh, it's Brother Monagon again, back with another quick video. Spirit got on me. I just wanted to make a video about the Lashwan Kodash um, and about the valid valid validity of it. Um, because, uh, you know, it's it's the pure language that holds true. It's the only language by where we. Uh, we can call on the Most High and the Most High's Son, you know, the Mediator, Yahweh Shai. Um, so with that, I kind of want to get into this uh, real quick. First, I want to go to uh, Exodus, the uh, the 34th chapter, or in the 27th verse. As it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write these words for... After the tenure of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights, and did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant and the Ten Commandments. And the language that he was writing in was the Lashwan Kudash, all right, which means the holy tongue. Now, there's always been different dialects of Hebrew throughout the ages, even going back in ancient times, all right? Here in Judges, we have an example of that, all right? Because you have something called Phoenician or the Paleo-Hebrew or uh, the Canaanite language, because at one point in time in Genesis, explains in Genesis the 11th chapter, the whole earth was of one language, all right? And that language was the Hebrew. Alright, but here's an example of how they had different dialects. So this is uh this is Judges twelve. I'm gonna go straight to the point. This is Judges twelve and uh I'll start at four. Alright, it says Judges twelve and four, and then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim, and the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. In the verse uh, verse five, and the Gileadites took the passage of Jordan before the Ephraimites, and it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, Let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said nay, then they said unto him. Say now, Shibboleth, and he said, Sibboleth, for they could not, for they could not, frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages, the passages of Jordan, and there fell at the time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. So here is a clear example that even amongst the tribes there were different dialects because. These, even though he said he the one this these two words, all right. You see, shibboleth means a flowing, a flowing river or a stream, and then sibboleth, um, I forget what sibboleth means. I added in the in the post production, but the reason why they said this because these two words sound similar, but they have two totally different meanings. You see, so that's why. Uh, there's always been a different dialect, you know, and the main dialect that we have to speak in uh, to receive salvation and repentance is the Lashwan Kodash, all right? The Ah, Ba, Ga, Da, Ha, Za, Wa, you know, so forth and so on, all right? And the only vowels are Ah and I. Okay, so let's go to Zephaniah 3 and 9. Because the Lord said that he was going to give us this language back. You see, he took it from us because we disobeyed his commandments. You know, they beat it out of us. We lost our heritage. And along with that, we lost our language. But here, the prophecy in Zephaniah 3 and 9 says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, to serve him with one consent. So, it's going to be a pure language. Now, when you look up that word pure, all right, it's not tahar, all right, which is pure. It's a different type of pure, which is barar, all right, and it basically means to purify, select, polish, choose, purge, cleanse, and or make bright, all right. But just like back here in Exodus, all right, um, Exodus the thirty-fourth chapter, this this says uh, in thirty-third verse it says in 
Uh, I'll start at 34. It says, But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out and came out and spake to the children of Israel that which was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. Now it shone, it shone because, of course, he was before the presence of the Lord. But it also sh uh, shone because when he was up there, what did he receive? He received the Lord's name. It tells you that in the third chapter. All right, and that name was a pure and undefiled name. And what did it do to Moses? It cleansed him, and it made his it made his face bright. That's what the Lashon Kodesh does. When you pray, it gives a whole another vibration. All right, and that how do we know that it's a clean and purifying language? Because you go to this scripture. All right, well, there's these two scriptures. All right. You got Psalms 119. It says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereunto the word? You see? This is the purest. This this language is so pure. All right? This is the language that's going to purify you. All right? Now, when you look up that word cleanse in Psalms 119 and 9, what does it say? To be clean. To be pure. All right? To make yourself clean. Purify oneself. All right? So barar is synonymous with zakah. All right, barar and zakah are synonymous. All right, you got purify oneself, and then over here, what do you have to purify? So this is the uh, lashon kodesh is that pure language. All right. Now um, let me just go back to the other scripture in Ephesians. All right, which reads this: Ephesians five and twenty six. Then that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word all right because the only thing to cleanse you is this word so you can't have different diet you can't have uh yiddish and aramaic saying speaking that and calling to the most high in those languages and expecting to be cleansed no the only words by which you may be cleansed is the lashon kodash is the ancient hebrew all right now let's look up the greek word for cleanse all right and um, I'm going to play it because I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Katharizo. Strong's G, 2511. Katharizo. Katharizo. Ka, all right. And this means what? To purify from wickedness, right? To free from guilt of sin. Like I said, in order to receive repentance, number one, you have to know the language. Number two, you have to know the name of Yahweh Shah because he is the one who's going to be the mediator between you and the Most High. It says to dedicate, to consecrate, all right, um, all right, of a leper, all right. So um, with that, I'm going to go to one last point I want to make about the Most High's name, all right, to show you that the only vowels are I and I, all right. Well, I is the only one that's by itself, but Ah is the only other vowel. So here we know the Most High's name is Yahweh, but listen to how they're going to say it. Strong's H3068, Yehovah, Yehovah. All right, so first they say Yehovah. There's no E's, there's no V's, and there's no O's. All right, how can we cut this? When you go to Psalms 60. All right, what is this? Psalm 60 and uh, 68 and 4. All right, and where it says, Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. So, this is a short and formed of the Most High's name. And now, listen to how they're going to say it. All right, now remember, they say, Yay, Yay. All right, listen to this though Strong's H 3050. Yah, 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 right, you hear that? It's Yah, Yah, all right, there's not Ye, there's no E's, all right, now let's go further into it, now this derives, because we know the Most High's name is He to be, all right, or He is, so when you, it derives from this, which is Haya, all right, but when you go deeper into it, because He is Hawa'a in the Hebrew, and here you have that word, Hawa'a, or Hawa, all right, so listen to this. This is the end part of the Most High's name. It's not Hava, it's Hawa. Alright, we know the Wa. This is a Wa, not a Va. Strong's H, 1933. Hava. 
of all. Right. Now, when we put it together, listen to how it sounds. Strong's H3050. Yach. Yach. Strong's H1933. Hava. Hava. Strong's H3050. Yach. Yach. Strong's H1933. Hava. Hava. When you put it together, if you were to say it as they were saying, it would be Yahava. But we know that this is a wa, not a va. All right, that's that Yiddish. This lang this Yiddish language only came around, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, in the, in the 700s A.D. 745 A.D. around that time. All right, but we know the Most High's name is Yahawa, not Yahava or Jehovah. All right. Um, so with that, I just want to conclude this video. All right, and uh, I'll say y'all praise to Yahweh by Shemuel Rashad, double honors to our elders, and uh, and Shalom to the elect out there on the highways and byways. All right, so uh, Shalom.